talk about Resident Evil because this this is it for me. I mean, this is Resident Evil for me. The creatures, the horror, the atmosphere, it's so close to the original game. So I know you're a fan of the game and you played it a lot. So I want to know, how did it feel for you, not just as an actor, but also as a, as a fan, to immerse yourself in Raccoon City and to be able to play the game inside years after playing it from outside? It was surreal. I had a lot of those like out of body experiences. The first time I walked into the Spencer mansion was just like mind blowing. I've, I've run through that room in the game a million times. So to be standing in it was, was really awesome. Um, I mean, it's, it's just a bit of a dream come true for me. And, 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 you know, having Johannes helmet, he was really the, the, the best person that could bring this to life. He's such a fan of the games. He's so passionate about you know, the adaptation. And I just felt very confident in, uh, in, in with him and with him hand, you know, steering the ship. Mm -hmm. But w one aspect that I loved about the film that is also true to the, to the game is that it's set in the nineties. So everything's uh, pre smartphones and social media. So I feel like movies, especially horror movies, sometimes are ruined by that. So it was refreshing to see how it was, uh, you know, incorporated, used in, in Resident Evil. So what do you think of that? vintage aspect, uh, especially after having lived in, in the digital futuristic world of upload. Oh, no, I, yeah, I agree with you. I, I think that the 90s aspect adds some charm to it. It solves some of the problems of like, why don't you just use modern technology? Right. Um, the music is fantastic. I thought the look was really great. Um, and it's true to the games. You know, the games were, were from 96 and 98. So, you know, it, it's just... It just makes sense. It, 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 it feels like a 90s horror movie, which I just think is a great genre. Um, I was a big fan of, the, of that. Yeah. So you're uh, no stranger to violence and gore in films. You did The Babysitter, which I love. And so what Thank do you, you. think we, we as, as audiences seek those uh, experiences in films like violence, blood, radar experiences, because Resident Evil provides Uh, a lot of that, right? I mean, welcome to Raccoon City. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's a part of the game, so it's going to be a part of the movies. Um, I think the thing about it is you need to know the tone of what you're making. And, you know, in The Babysitter, the gore is done sometimes in a comedic way. Um, whereas in, in Resident Evil, it's a horror movie, less of a comedy. It has moments of levity, but that just is, is used to make the, the, the horror move moments hit harder. So I think that the, the gore is done in, in, again, in, in a way that, that matches the tone of the rest of the movie. Yeah. So, um, well, after what we've lived in the past uh, two years in the world, do you think this film about a viral outbreak will hit different with, with audiences? I mean, do you think it, the pandemic has redefined this franchise in, in some way? Well, I mean, it might make you think this this feels a little more realistic than it did before. But, um, you know, I, I think that uh, most of the world has done so well in, in combating uh, COVID. Uh, you know, I think a lot of people are, are looking for a bit of an escape. So the nice thing about Resident Evil is, is, you know, for what it is, I think it can be an hour and 45 minutes of just turning off the rest of the world and and losing yourself in kind of a fun horror movie. Yeah. So, uh, well, did knowing about the game, being a fan, help you uh, connecting to Chris and connecting to your character, to the story in a better way? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I felt very confident just in my, my, you know, I had, I had, I've spent my life doing research on Chris Redfield. I just didn't know I was doing it for any particular reason. You know, I've, I've spent hours playing as him in, in video games. I've, I've been a big fan and, um, and then getting to meet with Johannes and hearing his take on it and, and, and what he wanted to do with these characters. I just felt very confident and at home in that version of Chris. So I want to read to, to wrap it up, uh, what Johannes Roberts, uh, how, how he describes your, your, you in the role of good-looking and all-American Chris. 
as he, he describes him as an apple pie, a small town guy who was the star quarterback in high school but never left town. He's basically a Bruce Springsteen, Springsteen song. And I, I love that description. And I want to know, do you feel like it describes you as well, not just Chris? I mean, I mean a little bit, aspects of it for sure. I mean, uh, you know, for me, it was hockey. And uh, I wasn't in a small town. I was in Toronto. But, uh, um, you know, I, I feel like I was raised in the, the kind of the all-American apple pie kind of way. Um, uh, I think uh, the nice thing about it is Johannes describes him like that. But but Johannes also gave him, um, you know, a, a little bit more uh, substance. Like the, the, the regret that Chris has uh, with how he handled things with his sister and, and you know the fact that he hasn't left I think is one of those things where it's a choice but it's also because he doesn't have anything outside of that city so although he hasn't left it's kind of like he's been stuck there it's one of those things where it's easy to say why doesn't he just go but that means leaving starting fresh somewhere else and and that's a bigger that's a bigger thing than just saying it.